Okay, so our goals that we apply to the DOE and that we constantly challenge ourselves on and making sure that we are meeting these goals is to educate and engage our customers in the smart grid project, not just the green impact zone, but the whole project area, get them to adopt the tools and then influence their behavior and encourage participation. And that's just kind of like what we're saying. We understand it's behavioral changes and that's going to drive these energy savings. We also, as part of our job to, and what we want to do is inform the remainder of our customer base about the smart grid. You know, grid modernization is on its way, you know, trying to let our customers know that there's exciting things happening at KCP&L. And lastly, you know, our job is to share with a broader utility industry about what's going on with this project. I've worked for the utility industry for 26 years, and I think today we're sharing information with each other more than we ever have before, and I think it's exciting times, and, and we're actually being open and honest about, you know, lessons learned, what's gone well, what hasn't gone well. We're looking at other people, seeing what they're doing, and, you know, um, borrowing the good information, good tools that other people are using, and so it's, I think it's exciting times, and, and these goals support that. Okay, so when we enroll our customers, we've got a lot of different kinds of tactics that we'll use to encourage customer enrollment, and I think I, you know, just talked a little bit about that community outreach and just grassroots, non-traditional ways of doing things. It's door-to-door. Uh, -door. We have two full-time ambassadors that live in the smart grid area and work in the smart grid area for us full-time, and they're well-versed in all the tools and working to get our customers engaged in these programs, and we realize that that is a very important component of a customer enrollment. We also know that there's a lot of other things that we can do, like, for example, email. Email works. It's the lowest cost way to reach your customer, and it really works. That's the good news. The bad news is, well, of course, we don't have all email addresses for our customers, which I'm sure a lot of utilities struggle with. And I think with the new, you know, this is 2012, trying to get their cell phone numbers to text them to see if our customers want to engage in that way and other ways of social media, certainly email being one of them. You know, some of the other things up there that we show on here are, um, you know, probably a lot of things that other utilities are doing. We, we recognize the first one is getting schools involved and the students, and we're excited about this fall working with our local high school in the Smart Grid area. We've placed 100 KW solar on their rooftop, so we think this is going to be some good stuff that's going to be happening in the area. Okay, this is the thing where I'm telling you, I think we, we share a lot of stuff with each other and telling folks how well things are going and, and what, what has happened and what, what hasn't work so well. And I'm, I'm telling you that, for example, we hired local labor. That's good. It's, it's great. It shows our commitment to the area. But these were brand new people that never worked for our company before, didn't understand the utility industry. So it took a little time to try to get them up to speed on what's going on out there. We know that another lesson learned is outreach, you know, grassroots. We know that when we hold a KCP&L event, customers just simply don't come to it. But if somebody else is holding an event in the area, some kind of community-sponsored event, if we show our support, be there as a premier sponsor of that event, then we get a lot of traffic coming through and talking to us about our tools. So that's a good lesson learned. The biggest lesson learned, I think, was the biggest aha for this project was that product adoption, a customer who enrolls in a product does not mean they're engaged in it. And that's where, you know, Paul will talk about advancing their engagement and getting customers involved in this, emotionally involved in this a little bit more because we've got to overcome that with our customers. I think um, dedicated support staff, we've had those. Oh, I skipped the one, customer tools at the time of the meter install. That's probably one of the most unique things that we've done in this utility is the fact that the day we gave them the meter, we also offered them an in-home display, which was exciting. People were sitting out there on the streets waiting for us to install their meter. It was just like kind of weird how that happened. That's the good news. The bad news is uh, the display doesn't work. It doesn't work by design. The meter doesn't even really quite work the day you install it. And often, uh, I can tell you that if that tool, the display didn't work, and the early, early people that we gave this to, sometimes it took over two weeks to get it to work, and that meant we lost engagement. So that's been a huge challenge. And lastly on this page is the customer segmentation. We wanted to do a lot of segmentation. We wanted to do a lot of marketing testing, but we're also trying to do EMMD on these demand response tools and show that we had a non-biased way of getting people involved in these programs. So we've been limited on what we can do customer engagement. 
Okay, oh, that's it. That's exciting. Um, this, this is just my little disclaimer slide that says that uh, we are funded by the DOE and we put that in all of our material. Thanks so much, Gail. This is a terrific start. Just a reminder that we're talking today about leveraging behavioral science for persistent customer engagement. And you just heard from Gail Allen, the senior manager at Kansas City Power and Light. And we did, Gail, have a question from Ruben who asked, you know, how did you set your goals? Kind of who and how decided what is enough? And Charles had a related question asking about what what were the expectations or were there expectations for how much enrollees would save? Was there a dollar amount or a percentage amount? Okay, the first one, how do we set our goals? Well, we have program managers that are responsible for these tools, and they've been doing DSM programs for a long time. We have an, a, a portal program manager, and then the other program manager is in charge of all the other tools. So first we can talk about the portal. Kansas City Power and Light has a web portal, as I mentioned, and so we just kind of uh, applied our percentage of customer enrolled overall across our territory in our KCPNL portal and said, okay, we think we're going to take that same kind of percentage and apply it to the energy management portal. So a lot of our goals there were derived from actual things that we're experiencing with our other programs. Now, when it comes to our thermostat enrollment uh, or the thermostat goal, I don't know if I mentioned it, but we believe we only have about 50% of our customers with central air conditioning in that area. And that's mostly just due to these are very, very old homes in, in a city that's, you know, older city. They just didn't have central air back in those times. So we have that challenge of, uh, you know, just the market potential that we have was smaller. And then, of course, we took that market potential and then applied um, what we thought we could get for enrollment. Now, I will tell you, our goal for enrollment for the thermostat, for example, that 1,600 thermostats, when you think about it, there's 1,600 thermostats that are those standalones. We call them standalones. Those are the ones that will receive their demand response messages. And, and they receive them from you for free? Is that correct? Right. That's yeah. exactly right, Jesse. All these programs are offered to our customers free. And those 1,600 thermostats, and there's an additional 400 thermostats in the home area network. So that's 2,000 thermostats in total. Well, when we applied for our DOE grant, that's what we wrote in the grant. And we did that without a lot of market analysis prior to applying for our grant. Now as we move forward, we're seeing, oh, oh we, it's going to be a challenge to get those all those 1,600 thermostats in there. But we've got um, some secret ways. <laughs> no, I don't know if they're secret, but we've got some. We're, we're working very hard on trying to um, to get that enrollment. We've just really started the push for the enrollment this summer. And one of those and we had several questions, Gail, about that and people who noticed that some of your goals were only partway there and wondering was that, is, are you just being very deliberate and phasing it or are we having some challenges around getting people engaged? Part of it was not the challenges of getting engaged because we're just now mostly launching these programs. It was the readiness of the technology. Uh -huh. Again, those standalone 1,600 thermostats, we just are finishing testing of the demand response on that stuff. Actually, when we put those thermostats out there this year, they will not be DR enabled this year. The customer won't have to participate in a DR event until next year. And that's simply because of brand new technology. So we right. waited till we were closer to be sure that the firmware on the thermostat didn't have to change, especially with the standalone thermostat. So anyway, going back to the answer is we set our goals based on previous DSM programs that we're using, as well what we thought the market potential was. Uh, Donald asked if you plan to support the Green Button Program. Well, at this time, our official answer is no. We have the ability, because Tendril has the ability to do that. However, because we're doing this stuff end to end, uh, we are providing our customer with all the information that they need. They can see all of their energy usage in, in many different ways, monthly, weekly, uh, billing cycle, yearly. So we don't see the need to be able to provide that information to the customer simply because uh, we're doing it. Now, if it's mandated at a later date and time and we need to do that, then certainly we'll, uh, you know, we comply to all mandates. Raquel had a question about employee training. You know, what did you do to help your internal people understand this new smart grid stuff and also understand how to engage with customers? And Patty had a related question, wanted to know if you used internal resources to provide all your marketing materials 
and you know sort of what organizational learnings did you gain? Did you do you have the the bench strength to implement and analyze results from the customer standpoint? Okay, the number one is the um, employee engagement. This was a unique challenge because it is a small pilot project. So there's many employees that are like, yeah, let me know about it later on when it's ready. We, our company has a lot of newsletters, whether, you know, uh, you know, daily snippets to our employees about things that are going on as well, I mean, email type stuff as well as written updates. And so often Smart Grid is a prominent project because it is such new technology and we know it's the future for the utility, it's the future of energy. So we're trying to reach our customer base just to kind of lay a foundational awareness about Smart Grid. Now certainly the employees that are actually working on the project, there was formal change management practices that you know, any company uses to make sure that the, they understand a lot of documented processes, processes that uh, we haven't always been diligent on documenting. We certainly made sure we documented uh, new processes because any smart grid project will change your processing. And so we made sure that we fully documented processes because certainly we needed to do it just as a common business practice, but is also because of the DOEs requiring us to provide that documentation. So, you know, we've, we've even done some unique things like the employees that actually live in the smart grid demonstration area, getting them, we call them friends and family, getting them enrolled in early adopters on the program, testing these programs with us, and even, you know, have, have a sit down lunch with our executive, you know, our executive sponsors telling them, you know, gosh, thanks for leaving this, and we hope we can continue to count on your support of these tools and let us always be the first to let us know what's going on. So, you know, that's kind of some of the ways that we did employee engagement, but certainly understanding that our employees are our best asset and we need to keep them informed of this stuff. So we very diligent on that. Then the second half of your question was the people working on the project and, you know, marketing. Uh, you know, because these are new marketing tactics, I can tell you that we didn't have a lot of marketing bench strength in our company because this just is a new approach and how we're getting our customers enrolled in these programs. So we have relied on a third-party local company, and just they've been great. They've been phenomenal trying to you know, give us, you know, just keeping us on track and coming up with some creative ways to engage our customers. And certainly, I don't mean to sound like our own folks internally don't have some creative ways because they do. And everybody's got opinions on what we should name things and do things. And, and we've got an internal team that's just done a great job of kind of keeping us all focused and, and guiding us with, you know, their creative ways about it. We've got some people that do some great branding and cool pictures. I mean, it's, it's, it's always amazes us some of the stuff that our, our folks internally do. So we, we've been very fortunate in that area. I'm going to try to squeeze one more question in, and then I do want to move along to Paul. But Andrew and uh, Jim had some kind of related questions. They're about in-home displays. There's some discussion that maybe those are waning in popularity. Some people want to move to their smartphones and so forth. And do you have plans to you know, to kind of do mobile versions or other versions. You're already doing a portal, obviously, if people prefer that. But will there be other flavors in the future? Yes, that's a very good question. We have, as well as our, our own KCPNL portal, having it right size for mobile computing and to further enhance that. Is, so we do that, and then Tendril has their next future release is going to have a lot more mobile computing because we do recognize that customers don't want another gadget in their home. They want that smartphone. You know, that statistic that I told you, not that many people have Internet access. A lot of them all have smartphones. So we know that that's the tool of the future and how we can communicate with our customers. And you're, you're right, that someday those displays will take on the form of more of your, your smartphone gadget. But I will tell you that the smartphones aren't reading meters, and those displays you cannot right now be able to get that information real time, some good information on that display. It, it's not being replaced just yet by the smartphone, but it, it's, I think it's coming, and we're aware of that. Paul? Yeah, Jesse, I wanted to add one thing. I think Please. one thing that's unique about what Gail is doing is that their meters are directly integrated in their DR program with thermostat. So the messaging on their system comes directly from a meter to the thermostat. So they're trying some new technology that I think is different. 